creating a culture in your organization where people can finally show up fully as themselves, where they can relax into being themselves, um, is something extraordinarily powerful and something certainly to me essential and, and, and beautiful. Like I no longer want to spend any time in places in organizations where I don't feel that I can be fully myself, where I feel that I need to be careful, where I feel that I need to wear a mask. Like I'm, I'm done with this. Um, but at the same time, this is something, you know, pretty new, right? Even just the word wholeness is not a word that we use in organization, right? It's not part of our management jargon, right? This is, this is pretty new. And so uh, this video is about yeah, how do you even talk about it, right? This is, this is so new. Um, and um, the first question I'd invite you to consider is, you know, to what degree do you need and want to talk about it now? Um, at the beginning of the transformation, right? Um, uh, maybe there is a good need, a good reason for you to talk about this openly. Like, I want to create a culture where we can be ourselves, right? Um, but maybe actually it's best to just start doing this. You know, create spaces, create meetings, create where people experience that. Um, and once they've experienced it and tasted it, they'll be like, wow, this was, wow, this was a great meeting, you know? Maybe then only after some time do you need to put words on it. So this is a, a question for you. Um, you know, what is the organization ready for? Um, you know, um, maybe it will reject any talk of this because this is too alien. Maybe people need to experience it first before you talk about it. Um, only you know, right? So I you know, invite you to explore that and, and to answer it for yourself. Um, but you know, if and when you're ready to talk about it, um, I have a simple advice for you, which is, you know, talk about it through stories, right? Articulate why it's important to you through stories. You know, story, 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 it's always story, right? Um, and there are the three types of stories, I think, that you can use to talk about why this is important to you and why this should, you know, is important to the organization and why you're making this invitation, um, you know, to create that kind of culture where everybody can be themselves. Um, and the first kind of story um, is simply to talk about your personal history, right? And by doing that, you're actually role modeling wholeness. You're, you know, you're revealing something about yourself. You're dropping a mask, right? You're showing yourself to some, some degree of vulnerability. You know, why is that important to you? What is, you know, part of your history? Um, some of things that you've experienced in your career, maybe even earlier, you know, at university, in school, maybe in childhood, like, you know, why, why is it that you no longer want to be in an organization where you can't be yourself? You know, why does it pain you to see other people be like that? You know, tell a bit about your personal history. Um, when you share something at that level, when it's not bullet point, when it's not a concept, but something that is grounded in your history, I can tell you that people will resonate with it. Like, you know, that it, it will have power. Um, a, the second thing, the second you know, set of stories that you can tell are stories related to the history of the organizations. Right? Um, what were some defining moments? What were some, you know, some moments where there was some wholeness? What were some moments where there wasn't? Like what, what is it about the history of the organization that makes you think that this is important? And a, you know, a third set of stories to tell is around the organization's purpose. Right? Why is it important for what the organization is trying to do for people to be able to show up whole, to not waste time and energy hiding behind a mask? Right? Um, and you know, for, for every organization, they, I think there's a pretty direct link that you can find right? that, that is obvious. You know, if you're a hospital, right? We we just know, we, we like we we know from research, from science that, you know, the, the degree to which people heal is directly linked to the relationship that they have to their doctor, to the quality of the relationship that they have to their doctor, and to the quality of the relationship that they have to their nurses. And so, for doctors and nurses to be able to show up whole, to be in a place where they can have deep, meaningful relationships. 
um, with amongst themselves and with their patients is directly linked to the outcome. Right? Um, the last thing that you want is a doctor that you know hides behind the masks and doesn't build relationships. The same is true in schools. You know, we just know that you know students learn and to the degree that they feel that they have a personal connection with a teacher. And so this whole thing where teachers wear a mask of expertise and know it all and keep students at a distance is ridiculous. Like it, it just, it's directly preventing students from learning. Right? Um, the same is true in, in factories. Like, you know, if, um, you know if, there's a, if there's a sense of fear, if there's a sense of, um, I can't bring in all of my ideas, including ideas that I've only half thought through and that might actually turn out not to be good and valid ideas, then then we'll you know, never um, improve the way that we do things. We might not um, you know, improve our quality. Like all of the, the, the quality of the work that we're doing and the, the productivity of what we're doing is linked to our capacity um, to show up whole, to show up with ideas that we have, to challenge one another. Um, and you know, if we all stay fearful inside our little boxes, I'm just doing what I'm told, uh, you know, that cannot possibly serve the purpose of the organization. So yes, I'd invite you to try and articulate this for yourself and test it out with some people. You know, how can you talk about this in ways that are simple and obvious and, and not esoteric, right? Um, I would invite you not to use big, complicated, you know, words from psychology or spirituality, just talk about it in very simple terms, right? The, the simpler, the more everyday, the more people will, will accept it. Um, and um, one way to think about that is what are some of the words, the specific words that you want to invite into the vocabulary of the organization? And what are some words you no longer want? And I refer you to another video. Um, I think it's video 1.8 where I talk about the language that you use, right? Um, you know, what are some of the, the words that you want to use that might be strange at first in the organization, right? Maybe you talk about colleagues and feelings and emotions and, you know, and, 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 and care and, you know, just instead of, instead of talking about people and resources and, you know, only using sort of the, the kind of dry engineering machine language that we use in most organizations or even worse, sort of the, the metaphors from the armies that, that we use in, in a lot of organizations. So what are some of the, the words that you want to use um, that just denote that you know, suddenly we're coming from a different place? We're showing up you know, with more of the kind of humanity that we might show outside of work um, in the workplace by using everyday language. So I wish you good, um, good exploration and then go out and start testing this with one of your people and see how it resonates and see if there are places where you're still not completely there, not completely comfortable. And again, then you can talk about this with um, you know, a spouse or a trusted colleague or a coach that can help you really embody talking about wholeness in a way that feels natural to you. Because once it feels natural to you, it will feel natural to other people. Perhaps you've noticed there is no paywall, no monthly membership to access this video series. That's because the videos live in the gift economy. This is how it works. I gift everything that goes into making the videos, my time, energy, and insights, and you get to choose what feels right to gift back. Please take a moment to reflect on what would feel good to give in return to help me continue doing this work. Thank you.